Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations in LEGO that I happen to see people building. As always, there are way more than just 10 creations gonna be shown off in this video. Everything you're seeing flashing by the screen, in fact, was built by somebody this last week around the world. Links to as many builders as possible are in the description below before I run out of a character limit there. And if you got any extra time, I highly recommend you check out some of these designers' pages. Also. Also, if you have any extra time, you can check out our web store, www.brickvault.toys, also linked in the description below for some custom building Lego instructions. This week, the custom build that came out in the web store is from the designer 2 Impaired, and it is the Micro Scale Gozanti. That's the Imperial Transport that can carry four TIE Fighters or two AT-ATs also included, and this ship scales perfectly with the rest of the Star Wars Micro Scale fleet. It's a really awesome build, very well put together. Everything that goes up in the web store has been designed, physically tested, and refined down in a way that is easy to follow along if you wanted to build this creation or any of these other creations for yourself. Anyways, it's a great way to help support the channel and the amazing designers we work with, and now let's jump into some honorable mentions of the week. As you can guess, a lot of Halloween-themed builds are here. Lestranger Absurd had some great ones. This is the Vampire Mistress. Also, we have some amazing characters from Hotel Transylvania. I really like how we got the mouths. And here are some more characters from Hotel Transylvania. Some amazing, amazing builds. Boba1980 created a fun sci-fi model here called The Lizard. And from Lego Sleepless Night, this is Halloween in the castle of Lord Aethel. Love this digital perspective that we have here with the mist. And then from the designer Apex, this is CBO Class Cruiser, Liturgy of the Sacrament. The circle in the center has some great building details and highlights. Fabs built a Volkswagen CBPK and it is really just a unique car design through and through. And then from Stefan Busby, this is a work in progress, but just look at the details for this floor. Simon Hunsbickler did another one of these amazing Lord of the Rings builds. This is for Return of the King. I've never seen anybody do micro characters at that scale where he just uses the head of the lever piece next to that micro figure that stick between the grill plates. That is insane. Tons of other great details here. Don't have the time to talk about them. And then also from the designer to impaired, here are some pictures of his Battle of Hawk. It's a really, really fun micro scale diorama. And then we have some excellent life size flowers from James Zahn. Those clamshell pieces are pretty much perfect for petals. And JK Brickworks built Eeyore. It's really subtle for this picture here, but I like that little bit of light that he added on the inside of the cloud to illuminate the drops. It helps emphasize the dark cloud even more. The Brick Artisan titled this LG 401 Dioptes Moth. And it's an excellent throwback to kind of the old Insectoids line with a color combination from a different era of classic space. And then from Woomy World, this is Necro Lantern and Pegasus. The digital glow is very subtle but used quite well here. Malin Garrick built Lego Optimus Prime and he's pretty close to minifig scale, maybe a little bit large, but there's a lot of details considering this model isn't particularly huge. Moko built a model called Mega Rabbit and Sam JJ has a build titled Bram Stoker's Dracula. The subtle red glow behind those stained glass windows is an excellent, excellent effect. And now we are jumping into the top 10 models of the week. From Michael Kanemoto, this is Sir Meowzalot, or this is actually a giant cat mask, and then I consider the person wearing it Sir meows a lot. Lego masks and helmets often have a way of looking a little bit funny or disproportionate in order for the thing to actually fit around a person's head. That is not the case for this model at all. And I can only hope that this was uh, Michael Kanemoto's Halloween costume because it is just so amazing. I love the details and the shapes. I only regret that he doesn't have a picture of him freaking out somebody's cat while he's wearing it. From Alex Mox, this is titled Grave Walker. I like the scale of this model when you look down at the graveyard below. Those are some really small headstones. You can see some nano figures standing there. So the scale of this massive skeleton creature uh, must be pretty large, including that pumpkin. It must be like the world's biggest pumpkin. I like that those shoulder pieces are used to create the shape of the outer skin of the pumpkin. The skeleton is extremely simple looking, but it feels incredibly animate with the poses that he manages to get. This is one of those great models that 
that has the illusion of looking simple, but really, really probably wasn't simple to put together. From Midwest Builders, this is the medieval haunted house. Perhaps we're looking at an interesting idea of what the old version of Halloween may have looked like. You've got a classic scarecrow in the crops, and maybe a real wizard that's actually handing out treats, which look like apples. The details for the house look amazing. I love how they created the thatched roof. The coffin-shaped windows and door are an excellent, excellent touch. Number seven, moving down, is from Matthew Tarentev. This is a post-apocalyptic combat vehicle, and we have talked about this primary build before in previous top 10 videos. First, it was a complete car, then it was destroyed. Now it is post-apocalyptic, having been repaired and modified to a certain extent. We no longer have glass windows, but a completely caged interior. The car has some extra suspension. It looks like a harpoon gun, perhaps, on the top, and an extremely mean and aggressive uh, separator in the front. It's hard to describe exactly what we're looking at here. It's both meant to knock things out of the way and also spike them in place. I'm gonna guess this is a zombie apocalypse. And now we're looking at another knockout architecture design from Sarah Bayer. This is Gray Plate House Mock. Probably one of the more unique features around this area is the sunken in pool using those arch pieces. It's small enough to where it kind of looks like it could be a hot tub, but might just be a small circular pool. There's a really interesting bit of color combination used for the exterior of the house. Lots of different plates all snacked up together. The structure itself has a very, very modern look. The build style here really lends itself well to a lot of these clean cut angles, but there are still a lot of fun smaller parts of the model that you can spend your time getting lost in. And now we are jumping over to the orc hideout from Little John. The seed piece here is that sort of new-ish shield piece that's come out recently. It's done in dark red. Specifically, it's a two by three modified plate with a bar in the back, and he has used it here for a thatched roof, which looks so good. This looks like a small settlement. It's kind of too bad that the orcs have to call this a hideout. My guess is that they're always gonna be getting attacked by humans at one point or another. There's some great ornate wood detailing that we have done in the form of barrel pieces for the columns and the wheel piece that's right above that orc that's fishing. The dark green swamp water also complements this model really well. It pops well against that dark red. And then in conjunction with Little John's build, also the seed piece being that shield piece that we were looking at before from the designer intert, this is titled A Forgotten Time. Now you can see the shield piece has been used as seat bottoms for some of these ornate chairs and that thrown in the center. But then look closely at the floor design and you'll see something you have not seen before because I don't think anybody's built uh, floor detailing quite like this. The handles have all been offset in a perfect form to create those three circles in the center of each triangle. And I like that because the design has some gaps, there's also room to play around with foliage and roots and small plants growing up in between the tiles. You can also see some foliage on the outside of the giant windows, which is a great little touch as well. And there's also some great ornate pieces of detailing if you look closer, like the crown pieces facing each other or the tie fighter windscreen dishes used as glass detailing for the uh, chandelier in the center. Now jumping down to number three, some of you might have been thinking that we wouldn't have had a Star Wars build in a top 10 video. That's not the case. First Order Lego built the Jedi Library Nightfall Order 66 Jedi Temple. Mock. Out of all the different Order 66 builds, this might be one of my favorite ones. The library is a really unique and visually interesting place to visit, and I like that First Order LEGO did not shy away from those trans blue details and in fact leaned in and created some interesting damage effects on one of the walls. The floor detailing is also ornate. I like the splash effects for the laser blasts along the stone, and there really are some amazing details the closer and closer you look. Now everything LEGO nuts makes his just nuts. It's really, really good. As far as I can tell, he's primarily doing everything in digital. This particular shot is titled, Go Get Some Treats for Your Old Man. And of course, the Halloween themes here are extremely, extremely evident. The building techniques are sophisticated, and the use of dynamic angles and lighting is just unmatched here. The blown out bright interior gives you an aura of uh, magic and mystery, and the bright, deep green of the forest in the background really helps highlight the jagged branches and lets you know you are in a very strange, interesting, and probably 
bad place if this is where you're gonna go trick-or-treating. And now we're jumping into the last build of the week from Andrew Steele. This is titled Proto Weapon XV2 Wyrim, or W-Y-R-M. It's hard to peg this model exactly. This is kind of like Grievous meets an elite who meets Akira, or something like that. The universe behind this creature is that it's an experimental kind of wormy entity that can create, absorb, and uh, bind itself to objects and armor in order to create weapons and also protect itself. What you have here is a really interesting set of tentacle and horn and whip pieces that all kind of mesh together. They look very organic because they're red and they're pink and they're lavender. Really makes it look like muscles and veins but they also wrap around a very cold, white, and smooth exterior, which gives you the impression of maybe a more advanced technology or some kind of sci-fi alien. It really is hard to peg exactly what we're looking at, but we're definitely looking at something not very friendly, and in fact, probably one of the creepiest and scariest models of the entire week, and this is not something particularly Halloween-themed. It's doubly impressive that this creature is actually standing up on its own. It's not a digital model. And my guess is that this proto-weapon could probably even give Carnage a run for his money. I just love all the weird organic details inlaid in every tiny little corner of this massive, massive Lego figure. And it's a great combination of those Technic pieces combined with Lego system bricks, even though they're not the more conventional system bricks that you normally think of. Anyways, though, these are my picks for the top 10 mocks of the week. As always, I highly recommend you check out some of the links in the description below if you have any extra time, and if you have any extra extra time, check out our web store, www.brickvault.toys for amazing LEGO custom creation instructions. Thank you so much for hanging out for this video, everybody. If you enjoy our content, you can always like, subscribe, share the video, do whatever it is that you want to do, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!